Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost and in today's episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to be talking about the new DNG camera profiles in both Photoshop CS4 as well as Lightroom 2. Using the different profiles can give you a choice of rendering options to adjust the look and feel of your images. Now you do have to be using the same versions of Photoshop CS4 as well as Lightroom 2, so if you don't have the latest versions installed, just use the Help menu and choose Updates in order to automatically install these profiles. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to start here in Lightroom and then I'm going to show you how to do the exact same thing in Camera Raw because there's just a little bit of a difference as to where the tools are laid out. So I'm going to start with this image and I think the easiest way to show you the difference between the, the different profiles is to actually create some virtual copies. So I'll go ahead and I'm just using the right mouse button right now. I actually have my tablet set up. The pen has two buttons on it so that I can quickly just create a number of virtual copies here. And the reason that I'm doing this is because I want to apply a different profile to each virtual copy so that we can compare them. So now I have this whole series of virtual copies. If you don't know what a virtual copy is, it's simply a, a secondary rendition or a secondary thumbnail that Lightroom creates based on the same original file. So I'm not actually duplicating the file on disk. I'm not taking up any more space. I'm just creating a virtual copy in Lightroom. Now we'll go ahead and we will move over to the develop module. It's here that you're going to apply these different profiles right down here in the camera calibration area. You'll notice that there are two kinds of profiles. There are the Adobe profiles, the Adobe standard profiles, and there's also the camera matching profiles. So this ACR24 and 44, we're going to ignore those right now because we've actually upgraded and updated our profile, the Adobe standard profile, based on some user feedback because we were getting some, some, some feedback that said maybe our oranges and our deep reds weren't quite rendering to their true colors. So we have changed that. So I feel that the Adobe standard profile is an excellent starting place. But if you're the kind of person who likes to adjust using the back of your camera, then you might want to use this second kind of profile, the camera matching profiles. And all of the camera matching profiles will have the word camera before the actual profile. And depending on what camera you have, these, this list might actually be different because we're really trying to keep things simple here. If I'm shooting with a Nikon camera, all of the camera manufacturer profiles that we're creating to emulate the camera settings will appear for only that camera so that I will only get the ones that are appropriate. So I don't have to go through this really long list. If I'm shooting with a Canon camera, I would only get the Adobe created camera matching profiles that emulate the Canon settings. So we're trying to keep it nice and tidy. That way we don't have this huge long list. Very, very helpful. All right, so let's go ahead. This first rendition or virtual copy, I'm just gonna leave this set to Adobe Standard. Then we'll move to the next virtual copy and I'm going to change the profile to Camera Faithful. We'll move to the next one and I'll choose Landscape. And you can see every time I choose a different profile, we're getting a different rendition here. I'll just keep going here. Here's the portrait and on the last one, we'll go ahead and apply Standard. Now, as I move through these, you can see that there's quite a significant difference in the default renditions based on the profile. In fact, I can select all of these, return back to the grid view by tapping the G key, and then I'll tap N in order to see all of these. I'll also use the keyboard shortcut Shift Tab so that we can see them a little bit larger. So as we look at all of these, it might be a little bit hard to distinguish between some of them, but some of them it's very, very obvious that these are very different starting points that you can then work from. So I don't know which one is best. Whichever one is best is going to be the one that you like the most because, of course, color is very, very subjective. We're just trying to give you the choice of a starting point so that you can make the best image the way that you want it to appear. So now if we want to take a look at some other images, I've actually already created the virtual copies. So I'll just select this series of images. And again, because this is a landscape, 
one of the other profiles, you know, maybe this landscape profile that's applied right down here, maybe that'll be the one that you've chosen because it's very, very saturated. Whereas on the picture of the woman, you might have wanted to have chosen the portrait. Although I will say that was a little bit as saturated as well. We can also look at this group of images and we can see there's quite a bit of difference, especially if we're looking in this area right here. This one's highly saturated. This one has a little bit more detail in the oranges. And it might be difficult for you to see that when you've got six up like this. So while you're looking at your profiles and you're applying them to different images, what you might want to do is go back to loop view, which is just tapping the E key, and then just use your right arrow or your left arrow to go through the images. Because I think you can see quite a big difference here that might be a little bit too subtle when you're actually trying to look at six images all together across a monitor. Okay, let's return to the grid view. And I'll bring back my panels here and we'll move back to the develop module. Because once you've selected a default profile, we need to know how to apply that to other images. And there's several ways to do that. One of the things that you might do if you really like one of these profiles over all of the rest of them is you might want to set that up as your default setting. There's two different ways you can do that. But before you do it, I got to warn you of something. When you set your default settings for your camera. Not only does it set your camera calibration or your DNG camera profile, it's also going to set anything else that you have changed in any of these other panels, like your basic panel or your tone curve. So before you change your profile, if you decide that you like one of these other profiles better than the Adobe standard one, before you change that, you might want to reset your image to make sure that there's no other changes, then just select your profile. In this case, I like the Adobe standard the best. And then in the develop module, you would use the set default settings option in order to set that DNG camera profile as your default from here on out. It's going to go ahead and tell you what it's doing. It's going to update this model. So this, ha this image happened to have been photographed with a Canon EOS 5D. It's going to reset the default settings for this camera and this camera only. If I was using two cameras from two different manufacturers, I would want to do this for each camera. So I'll go ahead and update those current settings. And from now on, any files that I bring into Lightroom or I import into Lightroom will be rendered using this DNG camera profile. But what if I like more than one profile? Let's say I like to use the portrait profile sometimes and I like to use the landscape profile at other times. Well, then what I would suggest that you do is make a preset. So let's go ahead and change the profile for a moment to the landscape, the camera landscape. Then over here on the left hand side, I'm going to click the plus icon and we'll call this camera landscape. Now, if I want to make sure that all my profiles are kind of in a little folder, nice and tidy, I can select a new folder here and let's call it Profiles. I'll click Create and then make sure that the only box that's checked is next to Calibration. When I select Create, we can now see that appears on my list of presets. Then if I want to change this to Portrait, we can do it again. I will add a portrait, a camera portrait and we will select the user presets folder. I'll only select calibration and then tap create. Now, if I select a different image, I can quickly move back and forth to see what these different profiles will look like. Not only that, because I've defined these as presets, the next time I import a batch of images into Lightroom, I can choose which profile I want to apply right there in the import dialog box. One other way that I should mention that you could apply the same preset to multiple files would be to select those multiple files either in the film strip or back in the library module and then simply choose to synchronize, right? Just select more than one image and then click the synchronize button and tell it to synchronize the calibration. I'll go ahead and cancel that for now since these are just virtual copies of the same image. And one last keyboard shortcut for those of you who want to um, set your default profile by using a keyboard shortcut, you'll notice if I hold down the Option key or the Alt key, the Reset button down here in the lower right is going to change from Reset to Set Default. So clicking on that would then set my default camera 
profile. Excellent. Now, now that we understand this whole concept and how it applies in Lightroom, let's just quickly look at the differences in Adobe Camera Raw. I'll go ahead and select all of these images and then I'll click on the Open in Camera Raw icon. We can see all of the thumbnails on the left hand side and have all of our tools or panels on the right hand side. So if I click on the camera icon here, we see our camera calibration. We can see all of the same profiles that we just were looking at in Lightroom. They appear here in Photoshop CS4 in Camera Raw as well. So if I wanted to change this to Camera Portrait, I could go ahead and just select it from the list. Now, how do I set this as a default setting? If I wanted all of my images to be rendered with this profile, I would use the flyout menu right here and I would select Save New Camera Raw Defaults. Of course, my warning holds true here as well. When you set the new camera raw defaults, not only are you setting them for the camera profile, you are also setting anything else that you've changed in any of these other panels. And just like in Lightroom, we could go to the preset area right here and we could create our own presets. You can see I've already created three, so if I wanted to toggle through them, all I need to do is click on them in order to preview what that profile would look like. Once I've created those presets, I'm going to go ahead and click Cancel for now, but I want to show you that I can right mouse click on any image in Bridge that's a raw image, go to my Develop Settings, and you will see all of my presets listed. So I don't even have to go into the Camera Raw dialog box in order to change the profile for that camera. One more thing, this is getting a little bit technical, but I just want to point it out in both Photoshop CS4 as well as Lightroom 2, not only can I set my profile and all of my settings for each camera, but you'll notice when I'm in Camera Raw or when I'm just in Bridge and I go to the Camera Raw Preferences, I have the option to actually make my defaults specific to a camera serial number or to a camera ISO setting. Or if I'm setting the ISO differently on a single camera, I can go ahead and set those default settings specific to that camera ISO. If we pop back here into Lightroom, you can see that in your preferences in Lightroom, if we go here under Lightroom and then Preferences, right here in the Presets area, I have those same options to make the default specific to a camera serial number or to an ISO setting. So not only do you have the ability to use all of these profiles that we've created, both the Adobe standard profile as well as the camera matching profiles, which will emulate the settings on the cameras, you can also create your own custom DNG camera profiles. And you can do that by visiting labs.adobe.com and downloading the DNG profile editor. Not only can you edit profiles there and they, they do have to be DNG files, but, but that's not a problem because you can take any raw file and just use the DNG converter and convert it to DNG, but you can make your own custom camera profile that will then appear in the camera calibration list. So there's tons of information. Again, that was on labs.adobe.com. You can go up there and download information and tutorials how to make your own camera calibration so that you can customize it as much as you need to. Excellent, that covers the new DNG camera profiles in both Photoshop CS4 as well as Lightroom 2. My name's Julianne Cost. Thanks for joining me on this episode of The Complete Picture, and I hope to see you again next time right here on Adobe TV.